Getting started. Finding your place in game development. Roles and fields of the industry. 40 years ago, game production was a lot less complex. Back then, it wasn't uncommon for one person to write, design, and code a single game in as little as a couple months. In those days, a few basic 8 pixel characters and rudimentary gameplay would entertain people for hours on end, which made it a lot easier for one person to learn and perform all the game development tasks single handedly. Nowadays, however, the expectation for the average gamer is significantly more demanding. For a game to live up to the lofty standards of today's market, it will take much more than the ability to write a few simple lines of code or to draw a few rudimentary pixels on screen. We no longer want, but expect, a totally immersive experience, a living and breathing world with interactive characters, high quality sound and music, comprehensive storytelling, and addictive and expansive gameplay. While the ever expanding complexity of creating a game may sound like a bad thing to some, in actuality, it's a great thing. Not only does it benefit us as a player, but it also benefits us as game creators. It simply means the game industry is continuing to expand and will need more and more people to fulfill those newly created roles and positions. Which brings us back to the million dollar question. What are the roles and fields associated with creating a game nowadays? And what skills and experience do I need to get a job in them? A simple question with a not so simple answer. In game development, roles can vary from team to team and may depend on the project's needs and its scope. However, while the roles names may change and the team size may vary, the basic roles of game development can be categorized as producers, testers and QA, audio designers, programmers, artists, and game designers. Producers. A producer is responsible for balancing the time, money, and quality of the game. The producer's main job is to work with a game's production staff, such as artists, designers, programmers, and engineers, to ensure everyone is doing what they're supposed to be doing, so the game is getting produced on time and on budget. One of the main responsibilities of a producer is the ability to manage people through clear communication and conflict resolution. And, while producers may be involved in creative decisions, their main focus is on facilitating the development process, not dictating the creative content of gameplay. Here are three basic producer roles. Although the names may vary from company to company, their basic functions remain the same. Executive producer, producer, and associate producer. However, depending on the needs of the project, not all of these roles may be necessary. Becoming a producer usually requires at least 3 to 5 years experience, 5 to 10 years for an executive producer, and only 1 to 3 years to become an associate producer. Since producers have a variety of skills and backgrounds, it's possible to start out in the game development industry and work your way up or even transition from a totally different job or industry. And while starting within the game industry and working your way up will usually make you a better producer on a technical level, Keep in mind the most important skills of a good producer is strong leadership, project management, effective communication, and organization. Testing and Quality Assurance Game Tester and Quality Assurance, or QA for short, are vital parts of the game development process, and they are responsible for playing, testing, and finding defects in the game. In some cases, early testing begins at the pre-production phase by testing prototypes and new features, but more often than not, Testers usually begin their work later in the production phase, after a playable game build is available. Once testing begins, testers and QA are involved until the end of the development process, even well after the production phase has officially ended. In fact, they're often the last people to finish working on the game. Game Testers Game testing involves playing a game before it's released and recording errors, bugs, frame rate inconsistencies, and entertainment value. Similar to starting out in the mailroom or an intern, becoming an in-house game tester is said to be a good way to start a career in the AAA game industry. The benefits of starting this way are mainly due to the fact it offers you the opportunity to network within the company. Additionally, many companies will post their jobs and hire in-house before posting their job opportunities to the public, which can allow qualified candidates within the studio an opportunity to ascend to a more desirable position. Quality Assurance 
QA, or quality assurance, is often confused with testing. However, unlike testing, QA involves establishing and adhering to standards and procedures for game development. QA's main roles and responsibilities include ensuring the game meets the design, programming, and code standards set by the game developer, as well as process monitoring and product evaluation. The roles of QA and tester are often combined in many studios, and depending on the studio size and budget, QA or testing, sometimes both, will be outsourced. Since testers are exposed to all aspects of game development, the testing department is a good starting point into a career in the game development industry. There is no formal training or experience needed for a game tester position. In general, testers are people who enjoy playing games, have an eye for detail, and have the ability to analyze problems and articulate them. Testers should have good writing and oral communication skills so they can clearly describe a bug to the developers. Audio Designers Audio for game projects include music, sound effects, and also might include verbal dialogue. Many smaller studio, and some mid-sized ones, will not have a dedicated audio department or teams of their own, and outsource many of their audio services. The four main positions within the audio department are audio director, audio programmer, composer, and sound designer. Audio director. The audio director plans, organizes, and supervises the creation and implementation of all game audio, while also working alongside a team as a senior audio developer. The audio director's main responsibilities is managing the audio department and working closely with the audio programmer to ensure the audio assets get properly incorporated into the game. This is a senior position in the audio team and requires a minimum of five years of experience working in video game audio. Ideally, audio directors should have experience with as many aspects of video game development as possible, including at the very least audio development, audio implementation, and game design. Audio Programmers Audio programmers are skilled programmers who specialize in putting audio into video game engines. Though this position isn't available in small to mid-sized studios, Large studios are increasingly likely to hire a coder who specializes in audio implementation. The audio programmers are mainly responsible for making sure that a game's audio assets, sound effects, and music load properly, trigger well, and playback in high quality while using minimal processing power. This job may require at least three years of professional programming experience. Since many small to mid-sized studios don't offer this position, and even large studios only have one or two dedicated sound programmers, opportunities for this position are scarce and extremely competitive. That being said, since this isn't saturated, there's a lot of room for skilled individuals to find success. Composer Though oftentimes outsourced, a video game composer creates musical scores for video games and usually contributes to the project on all varieties of platforms, including consoles, mobile phones, and or personal computers. The composer's main role is to write or supervise the creation of the musical score for the video game. Many of today's modern AAA video game scores are every bit as dynamic and sophisticated as their film counterparts. But unlike a film composer, who writes or creates the music after the film's completion, a game composer creates the music during production and is oftentimes unable to preview the entire game before creating the music. Also, unlike film scores, Video game scores must respond dynamically to different modes of gameplay. There is no set path, educational level, or minimal years of experience requirement in order to become a video game composer. However, getting this position is not easy and extremely competitive. A good way to start a career as a video game composer is by getting in touch with game design students or independent studios and contributing to a game soundtrack. Additionally, posting and selling your work on sites such as Envato, SoundDog, and many others is also a good way of getting noticed and receiving extra income. Sound Designers Sound designers are responsible for creating sound effects, ambient sound, background score, and voiceover for a game, and in some cases, they're responsible for creating the music score for the game as well. Oftentimes a sound designer will capture or create sounds from the environment, editing them, and then incorporate them in the game engine. Much like their film industry counterparts, Foley artists, and sound editors, one of the main responsibilities of a sound designer is to search through commercial audio libraries and find and license the right sounds for a project. 
However, if the right sounds cannot be found or licensed, a sound designer will create and record sounds in the studio or the field. To become a sound designer, it's important to have a degree in audio engineering or a related field. Sound design can be an entry-level position, so there is no minimum years of experience required. However, positions in sound design are extremely competitive and not easy to get. It's important you have an impressive portfolio. Also, much like composers, creating and posting your work on stock audio sites is a good way to begin or excel your career. Programmers Programming is the core of every game. In fact, when most people think of game development, there's a good chance they think of programming. So it should come to no surprise that game programmers are among the highest paid positions in the game development career field, outside of management positions. A game programmer is a software engineer, programmer, or computer scientist who primarily develops code bases, game engine technology, tools, AI, or other related computer code for video games. They often work closely with the art team to determine the technical art and tools needed for the game development. There are several career paths in game programming such as technical director, lead programmer, engine programmers, artificial intelligence programmers, and generalist programmers. Technical Director Just as art director is the most coveted position amongst game artists, technical director is perhaps the most coveted position for game programmers. The technical director runs the programming department and creates the technical design for the project, overseeing its implementation throughout all phases of production and selects the tools, hardware, and code standards. Additionally, some of the main roles of the technical directors are making sure the project is technically and financially feasible before starting, getting the right programmers onto the project once it begins, and helping those programmers solve problems once a project gets going. To become a technical director, you must be an experienced programmer or software engineer with a minimum of 5 to 10 years game industry programming, leadership, or management experience. Most studios will either promote internally or look for a candidate with existing experience. Lead Programmer The lead programmer supervises the programming team and is oftentimes involved in the daily programming process. But a lead programmer's main responsibility is managing the day-to-day -day tasks of the programming team. The lead also works closely with the technical director to determine what technologies and tools are needed in the game's development. In the cases where a technical director isn't part of the team, the lead programmer is responsible for setting the technical standards of the game. As a programmer, a lead will normally focus on high-level tasks such as system design and the many technical ways to implement all the features that will be featured in the game. A lead programmer usually has five years experience, with general knowledge of all the areas of game programming and technology. You'll also need good communication and time management skills to succeed in this position. Engine Programmers The game engine programmers create or alter the base engine of the game, which usually handles simulated physics, graphics display, and collision detection between objects. Many games on the market today use existing game engines, either commercial, open source, or free. In these cases, engine programmers will modify the engine to customize it for a particular game. Engine programmer isn't an entry-level position. Most companies require a minimum of five years professional experience or a master's degree in computer programming or computer science. An engine programmer must also be fluent in multiple programming languages and proficient with assembly and microcode programming for various CPU cores. Artificial Intelligence Programmers the AI, Artificial Intelligence Programmer, focuses on creating behaviors that give the impression of intelligent behavior. The AI is most commonly exhibited by the game's non-playable characters, or NPCs. Game AI involves creating code and algorithms to simulate logical response to stimulus, dynamic pathfinding, strategic planning, group movement and cooperation, and in some cases, interactive dialogue. During development, the AI programmers will work closely with the art and design teams to identify what behaviors and functionality are needed for the NPCs in the game. To become an AI programmer, you'll need at least a bachelor's degree in computer science, engineering, or computer programming. However, large game studios may require you to have a master's degree as well. An AI programmer should be comfortable writing code in multiple languages and enjoys challenging problem solving. AI programming is not an entry-level position, 
Even with an advanced degree, most companies require a minimum of two years professional experience. Generalist Programmers In the game development industry, programmers and artists are divided into two categories, specialists and generalists. While often not an official title, in many smaller studios or teams, one or more programmers and or artists will often be described simply as a generalist. A generalist programmer is a programmer who can take on the various other programming roles as needed. Generalists are usually programmers who are adept in several areas of coding and able to easily switch between creating core game elements to AI or even the development of tools. Many indie or small studios don't have the capital to employ a specialist for each area of game programming or art, so skilled generalists are highly sought after to decrease the cost of development without decreasing the capability of the development team. This goes the same for large studios, who are constantly looking for a way to cut down development costs. A college degree in computer programming, computer science, or a similar field is required for this position. Additionally, you will need to be proficient in multiple scripting languages, as well as the ability to write code for multiple areas of game programming such as AI programming, physics programming, and gameplay scripting. There is no set years of experience to become a generalist programmer, but some large studios may require at least two years of prior experience in one or more specialized areas. Game artists are responsible for creating all the visual elements associated with the game, so essentially they're responsible for all the characters, vehicles, buildings, environment, graphic elements of the interface, and so much more. Game artists do a range of tasks which require different responsibilities and focuses. There are five basic sets of art fields that differentiate artists. Drawing, traditionally or digitally, graphic design, modeling, texturing, and animating. Whether it be 2D or 3D, an artist's role is often determined by the tasks, medium, and applications they focus on. Because even within each field, there are usually different components that an artist may specialize in, such as characters, props, vehicles, interiors, exteriors, environments, effects, cinematics, digital sculpting, interfaces, and so on. In many studios, artists may work closely with programmers or vice versa to determine how best to utilize technology and hardware limitations more effectively in the art production pipeline. In large game studios which require a huge amount of art assets and animation, it's not uncommon for artists to outnumber all the other teams two to one. Here are the basic game art positions. Keep in mind different studios and teams might have different titles, but the basic functions and duties will always remain largely the same despite their name. Art Director, Concept Artist, 3D Modeler, Animator, Texture Artist, UI, UX Artist. Art Director Perhaps the most coveted position among artists, the Art Director's main function is communicating and overseeing the artistic vision of the game and conveying it to the artistic team. An art director should be skilled in all aspects of creating digital art and is responsible for ensuring that all the art assets work as a cohesive whole and relate and correspond with one another. One of the reasons the art director is such a coveted position is, the art director is usually not only responsible for overseeing the artistic vision of the game, but setting it as well. In most cases, an art director is responsible for setting the mood, look, and style of the entire game. While not all projects will have an art director, especially among small teams or organizations, art directors are often selected for their high level of skill and experience, not their managerial qualities. That being said, oftentimes art directors do have managerial responsibilities also, such as hiring, overseeing, scheduling, and sometimes budgeting for their department. To become an art director, you'll need about five to 10 years work experience, and to be highly skilled in your artistic area of expertise. You'll also need rudimentary experience or knowledge in all other artistic aspects of game development. Concept Artists Concept artists are usually highly skilled 2D artists that create traditional and digital drawings and sketches of the game's characters, environment, props, and other assets that need to be created within the game. They usually work directly with the art director and give a tangible form to the artistic vision of the game. They are responsible for creating rough 2D drawings of most, if not all, the art assets before they are actually produced for the game. 
A concept artist is usually skilled in traditional drawing and painting mediums and sometimes in 3D sculpting as well. While becoming a professional concept artist is very competitive, it doesn't have a required amount of experience like many of the positions on this list. Also, there really isn't any complex software to learn or buy, unlike many other artistic roles in the game industry require you to know. In general, you'll need strong artistic skills in traditional fine arts and the ability to express these skills in traditional artistic mediums such as painting, drawing, and or sculpting. Knowing how to use 2D photo editing, digital painting, and digital sculpting programs is also a plus, and a good way to stand out when presenting your portfolio. 3D Modelers 3D modelers construct computer-generated 3D game characters, props, environments, structures, and assets from 2D drawings, concept art, and or photographs. Oftentimes, there are several different types of 3D modelers within a game development pipeline, each responsible for a different category of 3D models. 3D character artist, 3D environment artist, 3D prop artist. 3D character artist. Character artists are responsible for creating characters and or animals that inhabit the game world. Whether they specialize in realistic human characters, stylized cartoon characters, or amorphous creatures from another planet, most studios rely on character artists to help drive the visual quality of the game. 3D environment artist. Environment artists build 3D buildings, locations, and worlds found within the game usually starting with geometric shapes that are then reformed, combined, and deformed to create a computer-generated virtual representation of the game's environment. 3D Prop Artist 3D Prop Artists are expected to work on many aspects of a game, from initial 3D level blockouts for prototyping to highly polished 3D assets for the finished game. Prop Artists work on a wide range of different types of models as well, ranging from organic assets such as foliage to hard surface assets such as weapons or anything in between. First and foremost, to become a 3D modeler, you must be proficient in 3D graphic content generation tools and software. The number of years work experience tends to vary among which type of 3D modeler you are looking to become. For instance, character artists usually require a minimum of three years professional experience, while prop artists usually don't require any. Nowadays in many studios, 3D modelers will be required to not only model but UV and texture their work as well. So knowing how to take your work from concept to fully textured and detailed game-ready asset can be a huge benefit in becoming a professional 3D artist. 3D Animators 3D animators are responsible for bringing life to all the characters, animals, creatures, and sometimes objects within the game world through movement. In addition to in-game movement and performances, some animators are also responsible for creating cinematic cutscenes. Two of the main techniques used in developing animation for games are keyframe animation and motion capture. Keyframe animation. In keyframe animation, animators create and set the start and end points at which important movements take place. The remaining frames of animation are then calculated by the computer and filled in with what we call in-betweens. In 2D and 3D animation software, the computer uses these in-betweens to calculate the rotation, translation, and scale between the two different poses between keyframes. For example, if our first keyframe is 1 and our second keyframe is 5, the computer will place 2, 3, and 4 as our in-betweens. Motion Capture In motion capture, Special cameras capture motion from a real-life person by tracking markers that have been placed on their bodies. The information is then read by the computer and transferred to digital bones, which drives the movement of the characters. Animation derived from motion capture is usually far from perfect in the beginning, and in those circumstances, it's an animator's job to clean and manipulate the motion capture data so it can be used within a game. Much like a 3D modeler, when looking to become a 3D animator, it's important to have technical skills related to the software used within the game industry. So 3D animators need to be proficient in 3D or 2D animation content generation tools and software. Animators also need to understand the basic principles of animation and be able to demonstrate this knowledge in their work. Some studios also require animators to rig each character, the process of creating the digital bone structure that drives the character's movement, while others don't. Additionally, while there are many studios that don't use motion capture animation, 
Motion capture is quickly becoming a staple in the game development industry, so knowing how to clean and manipulate motion capture data is a huge plus for anyone looking to work as a 3D animator. Texture Artists Textures are images that define or manipulate color information, surface detail, and light information within a computer-generated world. Texturing involves creating 2D images that can be applied to 3D models to simulate real-world or stylized materials. These texture images can range anywhere from clothing and skin for characters to natural or construction materials for buildings, vehicles, and props within the game world. In many cases, texturing involves finding or photographing an existing surface, material, or object, then taking it into an editing software and manipulating it so it can be then applied to a 3D model in a process that's called texture mapping. Simplified, texture mapping is the process of using a flattened 3D model, or UVs as they're called, and defining areas you'd like to correspond with a 2D image or vice versa. Unlike games years ago that used a single texture per object in order to convey color and lighting, the vast majority of games nowadays uses multiple texture maps in a single material, such as normal maps or bump maps, height maps, and specular maps, just to name a few. Knowing how to create and or manipulate different types of texture maps is an important skill that a texture artist must possess. The background and training to become a texture artist varies. This is mainly due to the fact that different companies may have starkly different expectations from what they need from their textures. For example, the process of creating realistic textures like those seen in God of War compared to more stylized hand-drawn textures like those of Battle Chasers usually requires a completely different set of skills, software, or techniques. With that in mind, a texture artist should have the technical skills with photo editing software, 3D painting software, and or material authoring software. A texture artist should also know how to create and manipulate a 3D model's UVs. There is no defined years of experience needed to get a job in this area of expertise, but like all the jobs in the artist field, you must have a portfolio that demonstrates your work and knowledge. Furthermore, having the ability to create textures from scratch without the need to manipulate photos together or a base photograph is a large benefit and gives you a much broader range of potential studios that you can work with. UI UX Artist User Interface, or UI, and User Experience, or UX, Artists are responsible for determining the layout, content, navigation, and usability features in the game's interface. The goal of the interface is to grant the player effective interactions and control the game, while the game simultaneously feeds back information that aids the player's actions, or at the very least corresponds with them. Generally, the goal of UI and UX artists is to produce a user interface which is aesthetically pleasing, while simultaneously making it easy, efficient, and enjoyable to access game mechanics and features, or game and player information. This generally means that the game and player information, commands, and statistics need to be visible or accessible with minimal input. To become a UI slash UX artist or designer, you'll need strong skills in graphic design, digital design, or visual communication. Like many jobs, the years of required experience may vary, but in many cases there is no set amount of experience required to get a job in this field. However, strong skills in photo editing and or vector graphics software is all but mandatory in this field. While not required in all cases, having working knowledge and experience with one or more of the most popular commercial game engines is a huge plus. Additionally, demonstrating your ability to successfully develop UI on multiple platforms such as consoles, phones, and tablets can be a strong defining factor for a potential employer. One of the most important traits a game artist must possess is the ability to constantly learn and adapt. The main reason this is so essential for an artist is because technology is constantly changing and becoming better and better at an astonishing rate, and the quality of the assets the artists produce must match these advancements. Years ago, characters and objects in games consist of only a few pixels on screen that barely resemble shapes. Nowadays, however, games are able to deliver realistic-looking characters and assets that can almost rival Hollywood blockbusters. Designers Designer is a general title for a role that can have different functions depending on the project and the team. Game designers can have a broad range of responsibilities on a development team. 
A game designer's roles can be as large as defining the creative look and direction of a game, to as minor as determining the layout, content, and navigation of a game's interface. Game designers are involved in the game production process from start to finish. In pre-production, they brainstorm and prototype potential gameplay ideas and mechanics, as well as create documentation that defines the game and its scope. Game design is often confused with game art. And while the game designers and game artists do work closely with one another, game designers are often more engineer than artist. They take a problem-solving approach to design rather than a pure artistic or creative one. In most cases, game designers focus on gameplay, level layout, and user experience, in addition to formulating game concepts or creating compelling storylines and incorporating gameplay mechanics into creating a seamless, exciting gameplay experience. The basic design positions on a development team are creative director, lead designer, game designer, and level designers. Creative Director The creative director is responsible for communicating the overall creative vision to both the designs and the artists. They are also responsible for ensuring that the art, design, interface, and gameplay reflects that singular vision. They must ensure that all the environments, assets, characters, music, dialogue, and gameplay all work together to form a cohesive whole. Becoming a creative director usually requires 5 to 10 years of work experience, as well as lead design experience on a shipped title. Lead Designers A lead designer usually requires 3 to 5 years of design experience. Their responsibilities may consist of the management of tasks that pertain to the design team, but their actual duties may vary from day to day. Oftentimes, they're responsible for making sure the vision of the game, game mechanics, and fun of the game is maintained throughout development. They are also the voice of the design team in communicating to the creative director. Game Designers A game designer is often a general title for a role that has different functions depending on the team, project, and scope. Some roles of game designers are implementing design features, balancing gameplay, redesigning features, and creating prototypes for functions, ideas, and or gameplay. Ideally, a game designer is someone who invents or implements the game's rules and mechanics from a gameplay standpoint. In many cases, game designers are involved in conceptualizing almost all the aspects of the game. Game design is such a new field there really is no set path towards it, so the required number of years of experience may vary drastically from place to place. As far as skills required to become a game designer, you'll need to be familiar with a variety of game theories and gameplay mechanics, a good sense of what players find fun and entertaining, as well as strong communication skills, both written and verbal. Level Designers Level designers focus on putting together the game environments, locations, stages, and or missions. Unlike a 3D environment artist, in most cases, it's not a level designer's job to create the environment assets but to use the assets created by the 3D artist and put them together inside a game engine or level editor. Additionally, while a 3D environment artist will focus on creating the 3D environment art assets based off concept art and referenced images, a level designer will focus more so on building the world from a gameplay point of view. In many smaller studios, the normal tasks of a level designer are often folded into the task of the game designer. Level design is a broad term, so a level designer's task may vary depending on the project you're working on or company you're working for. Some of the general tasks of a level designer are laying out the large-scale features of the game world, determining the environmental conditions and level rules, specifying locations of AI and various interactive game objects such as enemies, spawn points, weapons, doors, and save points. Developing games for a living is both fun and rewarding. Getting paid to do a job that's both exciting and fulfilling at the same time is something that most people strive their whole lives for. In the game development industry, companies are looking for all kinds of people who are passionate about creating games. From the highest position to the entry level positions, each role is important in a game's development and essential to a game's successful completion. In this day and age, game development involves so much more than art and programming. And with so many roles involved in creating a game, it's important to not only understand what they are, but more importantly, figure out which one is right for you. So whether you hope to join an existing development studio 
or go at it alone. With hard work, passion, and dedication, you'll be well on your way to creating the next great game.